Our next unit is trigonometry, which broken down is triangle measurement. It allows us to find missing pieces and sides and angles of right triangles. Our topic today is finding angles with the tangent ratio. To do this, we need to find the three sides of a right angle triangle. Now, everything works off of the angle that we are working with. So there's always an angle. The three sides are the hypotenuse, which is always the longest side. It's always across from the right angle and it cannot change. The next side is the opposite side, which is always across from the angle we're looking at. The final side, stop your recording now and try the next slide and see if you can do the three triangles. Here is what you should have gotten, with X being the angle that we are looking from. Now, what you will notice is that when we calculate the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side for any angle, except for the right angle, what we realize is that all right triangles, regardless of their size, with the same reference angle, will always have the same ratio. We call this the tangent ratio. Now, one of the big parts of trigonometry is the ability to use your calculator. First, your calculator has to be in the correct mode. There are three modes for your calculator, degree, radian, and gradient. Your calculator needs to be in degree mode. So when you look on your screen, there should be a D or a DEG somewhere in your screen. It's probably around the edges. If you can't find it, find the DRG button on your calculator and push it until there is a D or a DEG on your screen. Second of all, you must know what type of calculator you have. There are two kinds of calculators, on-screen and non-screen. An on-screen is a calculator where if you punch in a function like square root, it will actually show up on your screen. Try it now. If it doesn't show up, then you have a, a non-screen. So how do we punch these into our calculator? Well, Let's start with tangent of 30 degrees. So we're given an angle and we want to know what the ratio is. If you have an on-screen calculator, you're going to punch in tangent 30 degrees, then equals. You should get an answer of 0.5574. If you have a non-screen, you have to follow the opposite order. You have to reverse the numbers and the tangent function. So in that case, you would punch in 30 tangent equals. Here's the results you should have gotten. Now, what pattern do you notice with the ratios as the angles get larger? Well, you should notice that as the angles get larger, the ratio the ratios become larger. Now, why do you think this is occurring? Well, start by drawing a little bit of a triangle. Here is a triangle of 30 degrees. Here is a triangle of 40 degrees. Here's a triangle of 50 degrees. What do I notice about this? The opposite is getting bigger, while the adjacent is staying the same. Next, let's work backwards to figure out the angle. Now, here for number one, we are given tan theta equals 0 0.509. So we're given the ratio and we want to work backwards to figure out what the angle is. Now, anytime we work backwards on our calculators, we usually have to perform the opposite function. How do we do this? We use a button called second function or shift or inverse. Different calculators use different buttons. So for an on-screen, I would punch in second function, tangent, which gives us the opposite of tangent, 
0 0.0509 equals, and you should get an angle of 27 degrees. If you have a non-screen, again, you have to change the order of the buttons. You would start by punching in the, uh, the ratio, then second function tangent, you might also need an equal sign. Now, what happens if we wind up having a fraction instead of a decimal? What are we going to do? Well, we do exactly the same thing. Second function, tangent, but since we're doing the entire fraction, we must have a bracket, then 4 divided by 3, close bracket, equals. If you have a non-screen, you'll find that it's easier because you can just put in 4 divided by 3 equals, don't forget the equals, second function tangent. All right, stop the video now and try the next two questions. You should have gotten these answers. Determining the uh, tan A and tan B. First, what you should notice is that this is not asking us for the angle, it's asking us for the ratio. So all we have to do is be able to identify our sides. So there's A, there's my right angle, and what do I notice? Well, I notice that for tan A, my opposite is 5, my adjacent is 3. However, for tan B, it is reversed. Thus, my, when I do tan A, my opposite is 5, my adjacent is 3. For tan B, my opposite is 3, my adjacent is 5. Example number 2. Determine the value of x to one decimal place. First step. I need to be able to identify my side. Here are the sides that I am working with. There's my right angle. There's the angle I'm working from. 8 is going to be across, so that's opposite. 12 is beside, so that's my adjacent. Since I'm working with opposite and adjacent, I know that this is tangent ratio. I now substitute these values in. My opposite was 8, my adjacent was 12, and I punch this into my calculator. Remember, second function, tangent, bracket 8, divided by 12, close bracket equals, and I get an answer of 33.69. However, it says to take it to one decimal place, so that is 33.7. Word problems. The latitude of Fort Smith, Northwest Territory is approximately 60 degrees. Jimmy wants to put a solar panel on his roof to generate electricity. However, he needs an angle of inclination of at least 60 degrees. Is Jimmy's house suitable for the panel based on the diagram? Now, one of the key words here is angle of inclination. The base word is incline, so that means going up from a horizontal line. Now, that's really important. So, Here's my picture. I now need to identify my parts. Well, the angle of inclination is going up from horizontal. There's horizontal. There's the angle going up. 3 is across from theta, so that would be my opposite side. 4 is beside theta, so that would be my adjacent side. So I write out my ratio because I'm working with opposite and adjacent. I notice that my opposite is 3, my adjacent is 4, so I fill in those. I also have replaced theta with x, although not necessary. When I punch this into my calculator, second function, tangent, 3 divided by 4, I get an answer of 36.87. Now that's the mathematical answer, but is Jimmy's house suitable? Well, it has to be at least 60 degrees. This is not 60 degrees. Therefore, it is not suitable. It's a word problem, so I need a word answer.
My final example is a harder word problem. It won't be so that hard in a couple of lessons, but for now, it's going to be quite difficult. It says a 12-foot ladder leans against the side of a building with the base four feet from the wall of the building. What angle to the nearest degree does the ladder make with the ground? Step one, first, I always draw a picture. You don't have to, but I do. So here is my building. My ladder is leaning, so there is my ladder. And the ground is what the ladder and the building sit on. Next, I need to put in my values. My ladder is 12 feet long. My, the ground or the base of the ladder is four feet from it, the base of the building. And I want to know what the angle is between the ladder and the ground. So next, I'm going to have to identify my sides. So here's what I notice. There's my hypotenuse. There's my adjacent. But the missing side is the opposite. Now, this produces a problem because tangent ratio works with opposite and adjacent. So unless I can find opposite, I can't answer this question. A method you were taught last year to find a missing side for a right triangle when given the other two sides is called Pythagoras theorem. So what is Pythagoras theorem? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So at this point, I am going to use this to find the opposite. So let's fill in the values we have. I know that c, my longest side, my hypotenuse, is 12. And I know the other side is 4. So I put in 12 for c and 4 for b. My next step is to deal with the exponents. I square 4 and I get 16. I square 12 and I get 144. At this point, I want to get a squared alone. So I've got to get rid of the 16. So what I do is subtract 16 from both sides of the equation. My next step is to deal with the square. I now have a squared equals 128. So I need to do the opposite of squaring, which is square rooting. I square root both sides, and I get an answer of 11.3. I now know what the opposite is. My opposite is 11.3. So now, I can determine the angle using the tangent ratio, since I now have the opposite and the adjacent. So I write out my equation. Now I fill in the values I know. So what do I know? I know that my opposite is 11.3 and my adjacent is 4. At this point, I need to find theta. So how do I get rid of tangent? I do the opposite of tangent, which is second function tangent, bracket, 11.3, divide by 4, close bracket, equals. This gives me an answer of 70.5. However, this isn't the final answer. First, it's a word problem, so it requires a word answer. Secondly, it asks for the angle to the nearest degree. So I look at the zero, which is in the ones column, and I look to its right. The number to its right is five, which means I'm going to round up. So my answer is the angle the ladder forms with the ground is 71 degrees.